guys, it's Mrs. G from Mrs. G Sewing Space. I am doing my introduction like this just because I got lazy and I didn't want to set up my second camera. But I wanted to make sure that I had a chance to talk to you guys real quick. Um, so we're doing these awesome little zippy bags today. They're a little different in the way we apply the zipper to the bag than the normal zippy bag. And I kind of like this version a little better. It's a little simpler. And we have a new fabric. This is called Marine Vinyl which I really like. You get this at Joann's. It comes in just basic solid colors, but if you look online you can find all sorts of sparkly vinyl and just all sorts of interesting vinyl out there. But I want to share that with you. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll get back with you afterwards and on to the video! Alright, to get started with this bag, we need to draw a pattern out. And in order to have our pattern square, meaning each side matches the other and it's equal all the way around, you need one of two sets of instruments. You need either this ruler right here, which is called a square. Even though it's not a square, it helps you make square squares. So this ruler right here I picked up at Harbor Freight. It's one of the rulers that they use at a um, normal, I don't know, toolkit, I guess, for construction workers. It's just, it's really, it's heavy, it's super heavy, and it's thick. Now you can get rulers like these made out of a thinner metal that usually come in uh, designer, uh, fashion designer kits, but I couldn't afford it at that time, and I was looking for something local. I wanted to pick up and have it right away. So I picked this one up at Harbor Freight, and I think it was less than $5. So for this demonstration, you would take your ruler, you would draw a line here, and a line here, and that gives you a perfectly angled square to mark all your pattern measurements off of here. If you do not have one of these, then you will need a triangle and a regular ruler. So you need a regular ruler and this triangle ruler. And using your, your ruler like this is how you would measure. So this ends up being your square like this. So you would line your ruler up however you want it. You put your your square right here. Oops. But you got to make sure everything matches. You need to make sure that this line is straight as well as this line. And as long as this line is straight here See, I keep shifting. I keep shifting my ruler here, right here, like this. And then you'll be able to do the same thing. So these two rulers together does the same thing as a square does. And we're going to draw out our pattern using these two particular rulers because these are probably going to be more available to you than the metal square. Okay, so I'm going to use a Sharpie marker here and I'm going to use my two rulers here to start our measurements out. And our measurements need to be, uh, I'll put it over here, it needs to be 13 inches by 9 and a half inches. Okay? 13 by 9 and a half. And I'm going to start by drawing a line here. Now this is going to be my baseline, so all my measurements are going to be made off of this line. We'll get to the triangle in just a minute. Okay, so my ruler is 17 inches long, so it doesn't matter where I put my marks as long as my 13 inches is within here, within here somewhere. So I'm just going to mark right here, like right here. 13 inches from right there is right here. Okay, from this point, this is where my triangular ruler comes in. I'm going to lay it on top here, and I'm going to mark it so that this is even. So right here, you'll get a little bump if it's not even. So you want to avoid the bump if you can, and make sure you line it up really well and straight. So make sure this ruler is straight on the line that you've drawn. Ideally, you don't want to move it at all. See, I've shifted it a little bit, so you need to shift it around. Go back to where it was. So 
matter of fact, I'm going to put those there so it won't move. Then I need to line up my, my uh, triangular ruler here. Okay, then I'm going to flip my ruler over to the other side and do it over here. Now, if I measure from here to here, it should be exactly 13 inches. So let's do that real quick. And look at that, smack right at 13. So that way, when I draw everything on the inside of my pattern, I'm not going to get any wonkiness. Because I was drawing this prior to starting this video, and I found that everything had shifted slightly so it's a little narrower on the inside than it is on the outside and when you're drawing patterns you want to be as accurate as possible any mistake that you make on your pattern will transfer over into the product itself and then if, especially if you're making clothes it might not fit you could probably fudge it a little bit with purses and zipper bags and things like that but when you're making clothes things that need to fit a body you can't have mistakes like that so now I'm going to measure up nine and a half inches. Oh, sharp marker. Haha. Uh -huh. Nine and a half. Remeasure. See, adding that little bit to the top has given me just like an eighth of an inch or sixteenth. Yeah, sixteenth of an inch. So I need to go back and redo that. There you go. I'm measuring on the inside of my black marks and now I've got 13 again okay so we have I'm a big old 13 inches this way and then nine and a half inches this way so our length and our width is 13 by nine and a half now on the inside of this we are going to draw our pattern and it's going to have a half inch seam allowance put that right here. So a half inch seam allowance and we're going to draw it on the inside. And this blue ruler that I have right here is awesome because it has, let's see, can you see? It has little bitty uh, eighth of an inch squares and then it has the section where the numbers are and that's a half inch right there. So that's how I go around and mark all my half inches on my, on my patterns just by using that part right there. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, so this is a half inch, this is a half inch, this is a half inch, this is a half inch. I put SA beside it so that we know that's the seam allowance. Now, what we need to do for our zipper, where we're going to place our zipper at, we need to measure in the middle. So this should be 12 inches on the inside, right? And then I'm going to use pencil at this point right now to mark our middle. So 12 inches, half of that is 6 inches, so we need to mark our 6 inch mark. So right here. And we'll roll down, do it here. And one more up here at the top. And then we're going to draw a straight line down. We're going to line up. This is where our, our, this ruler can come in again. If we want to make it absolutely accurate, that's how we keep everything straight by using our triangle ruler. Okay. 
So we mark the center of our bag right with this with the mark right down the middle. Ooh, I'm hot. Working on the inside of this area right here, not including the seam allowances, how far in do you want, um, you know, how much of an edge do you want right here? There. How much do we want that to be? So this, on this one right here, it's about a half inch, which I kind of like. I mean, it's just enough. That way I have plenty of room in my zipper. If you want more, you can mark it as more. If you want less, just don't go past that seam allowance. So I'm going to mark a half inch here, just on this side, with just a little mark, like that. Do the same thing here. Just like that. Now our zipper, so this is where we need to measure our zipper at. Our zipper, where that line is that you marked in the middle, that's where our zipper teeth are going to line up at. So we need to figure out, let's see, our zipper is just less than an inch wide, 7 eighths, there you go, golly, I think of the, the fractions there. So it's like 7 eighths of an inch wide, which means the width that we're going to draw here needs to be less than 7 eighths. So I want my seam to go right in the middle of our fabric right there, which is 6 eighths wide. Now wait, 16 6 16 Holy crap, fractions are going to kill me. I do this all the time, but I tend to eyeball it. So, our fabric right here is 6 of a 16th wide, and we want the middle of that, or at least enough of it. So, I want to 3 16ths is where I want. Alright, I had to cover my pattern, otherwise the, the camera focuses on the pattern and not what I want it to focus on. So, do you see where the fabric part of the zipper lays on the measuring? So I want it right in the middle, so it's like right there, 3 16 because I don't want a whole lot of fabric showing, but I want plenty on the inside so that I have plenty of room. So this right here, that measurement, which is 1, 2, 3, 3 16 that's what I'm going to mark. So this comes in really handy, because now I can mark three squares down the line, and get a straight line because that would be 3 16 which is what I'm going to do now. So, three squares to the, on this side of the line and three squares on that side of the line. Okay, so I've got it just like that. That mark in the middle is where our zipper tape is going to go, and these marks on the side is where we need to cut out. Or as a matter of fact, we're going to cut in just slightly inside of that. Because we want to make sure that we have plenty of room not only to place our zipper but to make sure that we make sure we get the fabric and the zipper and not um, we don't want to be so close to the edge of the zipper that it doesn't get sewn down so I'm going to mark this with a ruler with my sharpie okay so now I'm going to cut all this out I'm going to cut out the outside and then I'm going to cut out right here and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Okay, now because my paper curls, I'm going to flatten it out by rolling it in the opposite direction. And just, you know, not pressing it flat, but just giving it a little squeeze. And that's enough to make my paper flat. So now I'm going to cut out the inside, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in such a way like this so I can cut right there in the middle and still get the middle on each side, like that. And so see, I lined it up so everything cut through just fine. And then I'm going to cut about right here. I'm going to make angled cuts into the corners and then trim everything out. our pattern and remember whenever we have a pattern we need to mark it. So this is going to be a zipper bag and we need a cut two 
of fabric or cut one of the marine vinyl. Of marine vinyl. Um, I'm going to mark also on here how my length and width, so it's 13 inches by 9.5, and, and you need at least a 10 inch zipper, or if not longer. So, a 10 inch zipper or longer. Okay, now we're ready to cut out our fabric. Okay, just to talk a second about the fabric that I'm using. So we're going to make the zipper bag two different ways. We're going to make it with fabric, which means you're going to need two pieces. You're going to need an outside and you're going to need an inside or an outer fabric and a lining. And then we're going to use this. This is called marine vinyl. This is kind of like a pleather. And this is what I'm going to use for the second bag. And this is stuff that you can get it at Joann's. I buy small increments. This is only a quarter of a yard. But it's like 50, 50 something inches. It's wider than the normal 44 inches that you would buy a fabric on a bolt. And so this is what I'm going to use. And for the marine vinyl, all you need is one. You just need to cut one out because you don't even have to line it unless you want to. And for marine vinyl, I'm, I'm just not even going to worry about it because um, there's no point. It's pretty sturdy. But one of the things is, when you cut out fabric for the bag, you can always uh, decorate your bag before you put it together. So any type of embroidery, decoration, leather, lace, buttons, whatever, do that all before you start putting it all together. And just so that you know, marine vinyl can be embroidered on. So if you have an embroidery machine, you can embroider on this. So now, first things first, I'm going to iron enough of this to place my pattern on so that all my fabric will be flat. I'm going to go iron it and then we'll cut everything out. Okay, as you can see here, I have already cut out. I cut everything out and I pinned it together. I'm going to show you this one in just a minute. But when I had cut everything out, cut the holes out of my vinyl and my other material over here, I realized I'm not quite sure how I did it. And even though I know it's explained on the video, I'm still not sure how I did it. But the hole, this particular hole ended up being larger than my original pattern. So this is the pattern that I drew out first so I could make sure I could do the bag correctly. And then this is the one that we drew out together on the video. And for whatever reason, here I'll show you, you can see, let's see, the edge, there is a difference in the zipper, the width of the zipper from the paper on top to the paper in the, in the back. So this is my original, and then this is my, the one we did on the video. And that makes a huge difference. So somehow or another, I've managed to make the hole bigger when I shouldn't have it. Like I said, I don't know how I did that, but I did that. So when you're drawing out the pattern originally, make the hole smaller. And even this one, which is definitely narrower, you can see how much narrower, let's see. You can see how much narrower this one is compared to this one. And I would even make this even more narrow. If you're sewing two pieces of fabric together, you're still gonna have a seam allowance. So this one even needs to be even smaller to put the fabric together. But if you're sewing vinyl, then you can cut it out and not worry about it. But it still needs to be um, small enough so that you won't have this problem. So right here I took my zipper and lined it up on my vinyl and tip here, a glue stick. A glue stick is awesome for this because what I did, I flipped it over and I glued down my zipper. So I have it aligned exactly where I wanted it to be. I glued it down and now I know where to sew. Unfortunately, I was not the brightest and I picked it up by the zipper which is why it came undone. I was still, it's glued down here but not here because I had to happen to, instead of picking it up by this way, I picked it up this way and then pulled it off. But that's okay, it's still in one spot. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this on. 
but because this hole is so much larger than what it should be, I'm going to sew right there on the very, very edge to make sure I can get my zipper tape um, and get that sewn down. So this is why it's much more important to make sure your hole that you cut out of your pattern is a lot more narrower than you think it's going to be, than you think you need it, I should say. You don't want it too wide because then you run into problems like this. Now, for this particular one, I'm going to set these aside. Because my hole is so wide, and when I sew it, it's just going to get even wider. I need to figure out a way to put my zipper in without um, cutting it out. Honestly, I, I didn't want to go back and cut out two new pieces of fabric. and Because then what would I do with this one? So what I ended up doing was taking strips of fabric, sewing it onto the zipper so that it will give width to my zipper and then when once this is done and I attach the zipper it'll be wide enough to cover the hole and so that's what I'm going to do with this so as of this moment in time I have my vinyl with my zipper glued on temporarily and then I took my two pieces of fabric that I had and I put them right sides together right sides together it seems weird it seems backwards but I did it right sides together matching up my hole, matching up my sides. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew a small seam allowance, probably an eighth of an inch, around the hole. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to sew my zipper onto the vinyl, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I sewed around the edges here, snipped my threads for this particular one, and I also snipped to the corners there you go. And, and I snipped to the corners so that I snipped to the thread but not through the thread. So when you flip everything inside out, it'll make it easier and there won't be a put any pulling right there. And let me just show you guys this. Do you guys see what I did there? I sewed around the square, but I neglected to put my zipper pull in the middle. I was wondering why it went so easy. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to untick right there. I'm, I'm going to pick, rip, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to pull those stitches out and move my zipper into the middle and then re-sew. Because that is not a brilliant way to make a bag when you cannot open it. So, I'll be right back. I'm going to go fix this and then we'll move on to the next step. Alright, you guys. So, I fixed it. I fixed my zipper here. I moved the zipper tab into the inside so that I can actually open and close my bag now. And so, I'm going to snip the ends oops, here. I'm not going to snip them too close. Probably about, you know, a half inch. Snip those. Snip those. And then I'm going to set this aside until the other bag is ready and then we can sew up all the edges together. So we'll fling that over here and we're going to put this one together. So my right sides are together for my inner and my outer uh, fabric. Sewed the rectangle, cut it out, snip my corners. So I would need to snip my corners and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lining, I'm going to flip it through that hole to the outside. So I'm going to take my lining and just flip it through, just like this. And then I'm going to match up my edges and my corners again. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to finger press this flat. So I don't want, I want it even. See, I want it even here. I want to finger press flat so the lining isn't showing and the outer edge isn't showing. I'm going to do the same here. See how it pulls a little bit here? If I'm going to finger press that down flat. It's okay if it pulls a little bit but if you didn't make that snip on the other side it would be pulling a lot and it wouldn't be lying as flat as it is right now. So I'm going to finger press this down and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to iron this flat. And then I'm going to sew on my zipper the same way I sewed the zipper on to the vinyl. So I'm just going to attach it like this, iron it all down. So now, once I get this iron flat, I'm going to attach my zipper. 
Okay, now that I have both my bags with the zippers sewn in correctly, with the zipper tabs and the inside of the holes where they're supposed to be, we're going to sew our bags together now. So we'll start with the easy one, which is the vinyl. So all you have to do for this one is zip to the middle. Because these holes are going to be the ones that you flip through to get to the other side. Except for this one. There's another hole on that one, but we'll get to that one in a second. So on this one, all you have to do is open up your zipper big enough to get your hand in. Fold it over, right sides together. Match up your corners. Now I'm clipping this because I didn't want to put a needle through it. I don't want to puncture holes in here until I have to when I'm sewing. So when you come up to the edges, all you have to do is clip that edge. And the vinyl is the simplest one because you're not getting too complicated. There's only one layer here. I mean, if you want to put a lining on, you can, but it's vinyl and I'm not worried about it. This one is a little different. So we're going to start out doing the same way. We're going to have our right sides together, matching them up. And I'm going to pin them in place. So right sides together here. This is my outer fabric. We're going to do right sides together here on my lining, my inside fabric. And then I'm going to also pin for this one the hole which you have to flip through. So this is like a normal zipper bag. My zipper is undone here in the middle so I can get through the middle. But then we're going to be sewing just like a normal zipper bag. So we're going to leave a hole here in our lining and we're going to sew all the way around everywhere else. And so I tend to sew a quarter of an inch all the way around except for the bottom. The bottom where we're going to have the hole at to flip, I'm going to sew a half inch. That extra quarter of an inch taken off the bottom of your lining allows your lining to lie flat on the inside because otherwise you'll have that much fabric crumple up in a wrinkle at the bottom of the bag. Okay, so we're going to do something a little different right here on the sides. If you allow it to do what it wants to do and you pinch, you see how the lining kind of encloses the inside right here of the outer fabric, kind of like a hug. It's hugging the outer fabric. We kind of want to do it the opposite way. We want our outer fabric to hug our lining fabric. Because when you flip it inside out, there'll be less of a wrinkle there. And then you're going to pin it. And then when you sew it, you just sew straight across. Okay, so there you go. So now I'm going to sew this all the way around, back stitch at the at the end in the beginning. This one I'm going to start just like a normal zipper bag. I'm going to have a hole right here to be able to flip things through. So I'm going to start here and go all the way around, stop here, back stitching, and then flipping everything inside out. So I'm going to go sew it up and then I'll be back. Okay, I got it all done. I'm going to snip all my threads real quick. Okay, so I'm going to flip this one out, but first things first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim that corner because when you flip it inside out, all that bulk right here in the corner is going to stay there, and I don't want it to stay there. I want it to be nice and, and well, just nice. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut at an angle here on the side. See how I thinned that out? I thinned it out a little bit, but I'm still going to snip across that corner like this. So, man, there's just no way to win with this camera. There we go. So I thinned it out and I snipped that corner. I didn't go through the thread, just as close to it as I felt comfortable. So I'm going to do the same thing over here on this side. So I'm going to snip about right there. And then I'm going to thin, the, thin it out a little bit at an angle. See? So now, when you flip it inside out, those corners... Okay, so this is what I want to show you guys. See that part right here? That part? I want you to fold it to the inside and then push it out. And that's how you get the nicer corners here. It's also why I didn't snip it, so you just fold it 
and then use that to push out. So that way the corner is all folded up nice, or as nice as you can get it. It should still be kind of... So one side always works better than the other. Alright, so now for these, you just go in and use your fingers and then poke out the best you can. And I would not recommend using scissors because you will poke a hole through your fabric. But if you have a chopstick or a, a dowel like mine, then you can use that. Just be careful. Don't push it so far that the vinyl breaks or tears. You just want to push it enough to put everything in place into the corners. Okay, see? And there you go. And there's the vinyl bag. It's really nice. Your corners are popped out. And there you go. Now you can fill it with makeup or pencils or I do pencil pouches all the time. Okay, so there's that one. So this one. going to be a little different. Now remember, okay, so on the pattern I had you guys do a half inch seam allowance. I always sew a quarter of an inch except for the lining where I'm going to flip it. That's a half inch. Yeah, that's a half inch. So now I'm also going to do the same. I'm not going to angle my corners. I'm just going to snip them. <laughs> flat and I'm going to sew it up on the sewing machine real quick and then I'm going to tuck this back into this bag and this bag will be done and I'll show you everything once I have it ironed and sewn and complete. So here we go and I'm going to tuck this on the inside, straighten all that out, get rid of all the threads, pop out my corners. Now you see how, let's see, here on my corner is going to show like a little Y shape because I had the outer lining hug the inside lining and that's how it ended up sewing together. So there's like a little Y shape right here. So you just poke it out. It's a little like a little dart because it's not going to be as nice as this one because we only had one layer here. So that was just a straight nice layer. But because we had a lining here, we had to do it this way because that's just how it folds. So there you go. There's that one. So that's it. Those are our zippy pouches. I hope you like them and I hope you make a ton of them. Hey guys, I'm back. I'm just laying here chilling. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you enjoyed making these zippy bags because they're pretty interesting and it's a definitely a different way of making, zip making zippy bags that I haven't seen before. Um, I kind of find the application of the zipper easier this way and actually this is a step towards um, this is a way to make a welt pocket it's similar or making bound buttons is similar to this way as well but anyways that's not the point the point is I hope you enjoyed the bag my neck's starting to hurt so I want to go tell you I appreciate you guys Click like, subscribe, put, throw comments down at the bottom, and, and that's it. I hope you guys have a good day. School started, yay! So hopefully I'll have more videos out, and I will talk to you guys on Friday. Have a good week, guys.